Welcome back to another episode of Stoffer Garage, guys. And today we're gonna be deep cleaning this 2017 Ferrari 488 Spider with 95,000 miles on the clock, which that's insane when you think about it. And it is a rental car, part of the fleet of seventh gear exotics. So if you're in the Columbus, Ohio area and you're looking to rent an exotic or want to, check out the link in the description box below because they have a badass fleet of cars that you can rent, which is awesome. We're gonna be doing the inside and the outside of this Ferrari. And if you like these sort of videos, smash that subscribe button down below, turn on notifications, give this video a huge thumbs up. Let's get started. All right, it means that this car is dirtier than any other Ferrari that you're typically gonna see on the road, which is gonna make for a sweet after shot at the end of this video. So make sure you stick around to see those before and after shots because you guys will not be disappointed with this transformation. So in last week's video, I had you guys comment where you'd wanna travel anywhere in the world once this whole COVID thing's over. And Brian Calapi won the set of Fox Clean detailing products completely for free. But for this week, I want you guys to comment down below, what is the one vehicle you wish you could own today? Whether it's a car, motorcycle, boat, airplane, it doesn't matter. I just wanna know what is on the top of your list to be entered in to win a $100 Amazon gift card. And I'll announce the winner in next week's video. Now with any detail, the process is identical, whether it's a Ferrari or a Kia, you're gonna be removing any trash or debris, and then you're gonna start the vacuuming stage and getting all of that large debris out of the way so that way you can assess whether or not you need to extract just the floor mats or the carpet itself. Now one tip is when you're using your detailing brushes, which if you don't own a set, head over to foxclean.com after this video to pick up your set today. But when you're vacuuming, go ahead and use a brush to get into all those little nooks and crannies and dashboard buttons and different switches and use the vacuum cleaner to suck up that dirt so that way you don't have to worry about cleaning up later on. So the question I'm sure you guys have for me is, did I get the chance to drive this car? And the answer to that question is yes. I got to drive the car from the dealership to my garage and then back to do the finished washing stage, which is later on in this video. And to be honest, this is, um this is a really, really fun car to drive. And you know, it is winter time in Ohio, so it's snowy outside and it's wet and definitely cold outside. So you don't really get to open it up, but it is such a cool car to drive because you are so low to the ground. The steering is so direct and awesome and sweet. It's just, it's a really cool car. And if you ever get the opportunity, I definitely recommend, obviously you're not gonna pass up driving a Ferrari if you ever get the chance to, but definitely take the opportunity if it ever arises.
Now because these door panels weren't super dirty, I didn't use an all-purpose cleaner to clean them. I used an interior detailer, which is more of a mild all-purpose cleaner, but also with an interior protectant as well, all in one. So I'm using my detailing brushes and my interior detailer to spray all these panels, get them all, you know, get all that dirt moved around and then wiping them clean with my microfiber towel. And when you're detailing your own car, this might be a spot that you don't typically detail, which is underneath your door panels here that you can see. Um, if you live in the north, this is definitely something where you need to look to see if there's any rusting issues or any salt buildup because that is a common spot that can get rusted and fall apart. So that is a big reason why I recommend you keep this spot clean. One interesting fact about Ferraris that if you did not know is that the steering wheel is a big component of all of the major controls that you need inside the vehicle, which doesn't include the radio, but if you look here on the steering wheel, it's got the blinkers on the actual steering wheel, it's got the wipers on the steering wheel, it's got majority of the main controls that you would actually need located right there within a finger distance away of your thumbs. And the main reason why they do that is because if they, you know, they want you to keep your hands on the wheel at all times because it is a powerful car. This car in particular has over 700 horsepower, which is just pure craziness. Um, but yeah, they try to keep it there so that way the driver is fully in control and always kind of aware of what's going on and able to access those controls without removing their hands from the wheel. One thing here in this little cup holder area is this suede liner that's 
honestly worn out pretty much because it's, you know, this car has been used for 95,000 miles. So because of that, you're seeing some pitting, you're seeing a lot of discoloration, you're actually seeing some of the glue from underneath coming to the surface. And that's just wear and tear. And this piece would probably need to just be replaced because there's not much I can actually do from a cleaning standpoint. It's just more of a maintenance item at this point. Whenever you clean leather seats, what can happen is, is you can actually remove some of the dye from the seats itself with just basic cleaning, especially if they haven't been cleaned in an extended period of time. And this seat was no different. Because it is red, it is a darker, unique color. There is typically a little bit more dye transfer that takes place because here I'm using leather cleaner. I'm not using a drill brush. I'm just using my detailing brushes to get this fabric clean. What can happen is you will still see some dye transfer, but by the next time you do it, you won't see as much because you've cleaned off wear and tear that's just been sitting on the surface. And once I'm done cleaning the leather seats, I'm just using my leather conditioner to coat them, to help protect them, and also seal in the moisture of that actual conditioner into the surface of the leather, which at first it is shiny, but as it dries, it does go into a more of a matte finish, which is what I prefer. Now, if you didn't know, Ferraris have the engine in the middle of the car, which is towards the rear. And because of that, there is no trunk. So you, instead you have a frunk, which is a trunk in the front of a car. And in this case, this one had a few pieces that were kind of broken here, but in actuality, it's a fairly large trunk and I was surprised with how big it really was. So I use my vacuum cleaner to clean the inside of this area and the carpet. And then I'm just using my interior quick detailer to clean up all the plastic panels and any dirt that might be on there. For the floor mats, I'm just using my extraction powder mixed in my, with hot water in my sprayer and then allowing to soak for about five to 10 minutes before using the drill brush and then using just plain old hot water in my extractor to get all that dirt and all that fluid out of the carpets itself and get them clean.
One thing I was able to do is you can see here that there's these holes in the carpet itself. And this is where there's actual ring retainers for the inside of the car. And the good thing was, is I was actually able to fix those by the end of the video in the after shots to get those secured back to the floor by just reintroducing and recoupling the clips to get those to seat inside the vehicle. I've said it in past videos, but black carpets are always hiding the nastiest stuff. And this pour just shows you how much stuff was pulled from these two floor mats only out of this Ferrari. You might not realize, but actually a convertible has more pieces to clean than if it was just a standard coupe. Because of all the different pieces that flip up and down to hide the hard top, you have to lift them up partially to clean underneath some of them, and then you have to fold it all the way up to clean the whole thing on the bottom side, and there's, there's just a lot more moving pieces than if it was just a hard top that you have to clean that might not be something you realize. A tool that can make your life easier when it comes to windows is this tool right here from Stoner's Invisible Glass. It's a window reach tool that helps get into those tight spots in the front of the dashboard that I would recommend you check out and try if you want because it's, it does help speed up the process and ensure that you get a complete windshield clean, which is something that I'm a nitpick about is making sure I have clean glass to see through. Um, but if you're looking to pick that up, I have it listed in the description box below along with any other items that I use in my videos. Now for the exterior wash, the first step is to just spray the car down with a pressure washer to get any loose dirt or any debris inside the wheels or wheel wells off the vehicle before we blast it with a foam cannon. One reason why I like using a foam cannon is it does give a nice layer of thick soapy suds on the vehicle that starts dripping down the paint and with it dripping down it starts collecting any dirt on the surface that is loose enough to just kind of roll off with that soap. It's kind of a pre-prep process that helps make sure that you keep your wash mitts clean when you clean the car later on. And while all that foam is dripping off the car, I'm gonna spray my wheel cleaner on the tires, the rims, the brakes, everything to start getting some of that dirt and grime loosened up before I use all my wheel tools to kind of get these wheels cleaned.
Now with all the rims and tires clean, I'm gonna spray off any remaining foam on the vehicle or any soap residue before I bust out the wash mitt and do my two bucket method to wash the vehicle. And I always try to start at the top of the vehicle and work my way down. And that it definitely includes the lower portions of the door panels and the rear bumper and the front bumper as last. So I try to get the top parts first, any part that doesn't get a ton of dirt or debris splashed on it. And then at the end, I go around the vehicle and get those lower components that are always more dirty than the top. Now on the back side of this Ferrari, there was a lot of exhaust residue that I had collected because this does have an aftermarket exhaust. So it does get kind of dirty in the back part of the vehicle. And when you have a lot of dirt and grime on the car, one thing that you can do is spray like an all purpose cleaner onto the paint that's diluted like 10 to one. Um, and you won't hurt anything, but it will help with some of that greasiness that kind of gets on the car from just driving down the road sometimes. And it can help loosen some of that stuff up during the wash phase. Now with all the soap rinsed off the car, it's time to dry the car. And for that, I'm using my Fox Clean drying towels, which if you haven't picked up one, definitely go get one today because they make drying a breeze because they are so absorbent and a larger towel that I can use just this one towel to completely dry this entire vehicle. Now with the car dry, I'm just using a spray-on ceramic top coat to refresh this paint, make it look shiny again for the next time it's rented out. And for that, I'm just spraying on a couple spritz on the hood, using a towel to wipe it around, spread it out evenly, and then a second microfiber towel to buff the paint and buff any remaining residue that might be on the car.
when it comes to cleaning the tires, I like to use this sponge, which is typically used for washing the exterior of the car, but it does a really good job at kind of absorbing some of the tire gel, but also getting into a lot of the spots that are on the face of the tire. And anything that is harder to get to that I can't get to, I just spray a little bit of the tire gel onto the brush itself and then use it to get into all those different nooks and crannies to make sure that the coating is completely covering all of the tire itself. I want you guys to make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you've been enjoying some of these different types of cars that I've been detailing, like the Audi TT, this car, the Porsches in the past, or the X7s, all the cars besides the super nasty ones that I'm trying to throw in for you guys. So that way you get a little bit of different content instead of just the same old, same old every week. I'm trying to give you guys some new, fresh stuff that you typically don't see in these videos that you see on YouTube. So like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna enter in for the $100 Amazon gift card, Go ahead and comment down below the one vehicle that you want to own today, whether it's a car, airplane, motorcycle, boat, whatever it is, list it down below. And for me personally, if I could pick up anything today, I'd probably pick up a Audi R8 V10 Plus because I think that car is just awesome. That's all it is. I just, I think it's such an awesome car. Um, so comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in next week's video.